But if you didn't understand the company, if you were just buying on the fact the stock had gone from 26 to 16 and then it gone to 10, what would you do when it went to 9? What would you do when it went to 8? What would you do when it went to 7? This is the problem that people have. Carvana stock was trading as high as $360 per share, but is now around $8. Fubo was trading as high as $48 per share, but is now around $1, and Peloton was trading as high as $162 per share, but is now around $9. However, in the late 1990s, Apple was struggling with declining sales, high inventory, and fierce competition from rivals such as Microsoft and Dell, and as a result, its stock price plummeted from a high of around $5 in 1991 to a low of around $1 in 1997, which was a decline of more than 80% over a six-year period. Despite this, Apple is now one of the largest companies in the world with a market cap of over $2 trillion, which raises an important question we need to answer of how to deal with a falling stock. So in this video, we're going to be addressing this question by turning to one of the greatest investors of all time, Peter Lynch. I'd also like to say thank you to Moomoo for sponsoring this video, but more on that later. Is a lot of times people buy on the basis, the stock has gone down this much, how, you know, how much further can it go down? I remember when Polaroid went from 130 to 100, people said, here's this great company, great record. If it ever gets below 100, you know, just buy every share, you know, and it did get below 100. A lot of people bought on that basis saying, look, it's gone from 135 to 100. It's not 95. What a buy. Within a year, it was 18. And this is a company with no debt. I mean, this is a company that was just so overpriced, it went down. Uh, I did the same thing in my, uh, I think my first or second year of Fidelity. Kaiser Industries had gone from $26 a share to 16. I said, how much lower can it go? It's 16. So I think we bought one of the biggest blocks ever on the, New York, on the American Stock Exchange of Kaiser Industries at 14. I said, you know, it's gone from 26 to 16. How much lower can it go? Well, at 10, I called my mother and said, Mom, you got to uh, look at this Kaiser Industries. I mean, how much lower can it go? It's gone from 26 to 10. <laughs> well, it went to 6, it went to 5, it went to 4, it went to 3. And uh, now I am fortunate this happened rapidly, or I would probably be still caddying or uh, be a bit of working at the stop and shop, but I, it happened fast. So I was able to, this, this was compressed. At, uh, and at 3, I figured out, you know, there's something very wrong here because Kaiser Industries owns 40% of Kaiser Steel. They own 40% of Kaiser Aluminum. They own 32% of Kaiser Cement. They own Kaiser Broadcasting. They own Kaiser Sand and Gravel, Kaiser Engineers. They own Jeep. They own business after business, and they had no debt. Now, I learned this very early. This might be a breakthrough for some people. It's very hard to go bankrupt if you don't have any debt. It's, it's tricky. Some people can approach that. It's a, real, it's a real achievement, but they had no debt, and the whole company at three was selling at about $75 million. At that point, it was equal to buying one Boeing 747. I said, there's something wrong with this company selling for 75 million. I was a little premature at 16, but uh, I said, everything's fine, and eventually this will work out. And they, what they did is they gave away all their shares to their shareholders. They, they passed out shares in Kaiser's Men, they passed out shares in Kaiser Lunum, they passed out their public shares in Kaiser Steel, they sold all the other businesses, and you get about $50 a share. And, but if you didn't understand the company, if you were just buying on the fact the stock had gone from 26 to 16, and then it gone to 10, what would you do when it went to 9? What would you do when it went to 8? What would you do when it went to 7? This is the problem that people have, is they sell stocks because they didn't know why they bought it, then it went down, and they don't know what to do now. Do you flip a coin? Do you walk around the block? You know, <laughs> what do you do? It's psychiatrists that haven't worked so far. I've never seen them running in. The, the, the psychological psychiatry fund I've never seen was listed for the, uh, for the SEC to make it through as a mutual fund. So I, they haven't seemed to help. Uh, I've tried prayer, that hasn't worked. The, uh, the, uh, so if you don't understand the company, you have this problem when they go down. Uh, eventually they always come back. Uh, this one is, uh, this one doesn't work either. Uh, people think uh, RCA just about got back to its 1929 high when General Electric took it over. Uh, a lot of double knits never came back. Remember those beauties? Uh, uh, floppy disks, Western Union, uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, people saying it'll come back. Well, it doesn't have to come back. Uh, here's another one you hear all the time. It's $3. How much can I lose? I've had people call me up saying, I'm thinking of buying this stock at 3 How much can I lose? Well, again, you, you may need a piece of paper for this, but if you put, uh, you, you put $20,000 in a stock at 50 or your neighbor put $20,000 at full at 50 into the stock, and you put $20,000 in at 3 and it goes to zero, you lose exactly the same amount of money, everything. And people say, it's three, how much can I lose? Well, if you put a million dollars on it, you can lose a million dollars. 
Just the fact that stock, this is the only, this may be a reason a researcher's stock. The fact that stock is three down from 100 doesn't mean you should uh, buy it. And in fact, short sellers, people that really make money in stocks, they don't short Walmart, they don't short Home Depot, they don't short the great companies, Johnson Johnson. They short stocks down from 80 to 7. They'd like to short it at 16 or 22, but they, f they figured out at 7 that this company is going to go to zero. They just haven't blown taps on this thing yet. It's going to zero. And they're, they're selling it short at 7, they're selling it short at 6, at 5, at 4, at 3, at 2, at 1 and a quarter. And you know what, to sell something short, you need a buyer. And you wonder, who's buying this thing? It's these people saying, it's three. How much lower can it go? You know? Peter Lynch points out that just because a stock drops by a large amount doesn't mean the stock is cheap or is trading at a good value. And I couldn't agree more. That's part of the reason that I focus so much on fundamentals and valuation of the companies that I analyze. Let's jump back over to Peter Lynch to hear some final thoughts. But first, I'd like to say thank you to the sponsor of this video, Moomoo, who can help you reach your investment goals. Moomoo is an advanced free trading app that integrates AI-powered tools, has real-time and comprehensive data, and the most engaged trading community. With Moomoo, you can get insights into price action using their free level 2 data, you can analyze trends and patterns using advanced charting tools, and one of my personal favorite features is that you can find investment ideas by seeing what institutional investors are buying and selling. Moomoo provides 24-7 customer service, has extended trading hours, and you can get real-time financial news. Two of my other favorite features are the Cutting Edge Stock Screener, designed to help you discover stocks faster than ever before. They also offer free educational tools for beginner investors. Moomoo is giving away up to 17 free stocks to new clients who use my link in the description. Open an account and deposit $100 and get up to 7 free stocks. If you deposit $1,000, you have an opportunity to receive 17 free stocks. This is an exclusive and limited time offer. Click my link below for more information. Now let's go ahead and jump back over to Peter Lynch. Are you concerned about the volatility in the uh, financial markets today? Do you think something needs to be done okay. to reduce it? I, I, I love volatility. I, I think I remember when uh, in 1972, the market went from uh, uh, down dramatically and Taco Bell went from 14 to one. They had no debt. They never had a, a restaurant close. And uh, I started buying at seven, but it, I kept on to it and it went to one. And uh, it was the largest position in Magellan in 1978 when it was bought out for, by $42 by Pepsi-Cola. And I think it would have gone to 400 if they didn't buy it out. I think volatility is terrific. I think it is very, I think these callers are very important. I don't think the market going up 80 points one day and down 80 the next uh, is a good thing for the public. I think that's not a very good thing. But I think all of these callers and all these other things, to keep the volatility down each day is important. But the market's gonna go up and down. Well, the, human nature hasn't changed a lot in 25,000 years. And some event will come out of left field and uh, the market will go down or the market will go up. So I, volatility will occur, and markets will continue to have these ups and downs. I think that's a great opportunity if people can understand what they own. If they don't understand what they own, they can own mutual funds, try and figure out what mutual funds they own, and keep adding to it. Over, basically, corporate profits have grown about 8% a year, historically. So corporate profits double about every nine years. The stock market ought to double about every nine years. So I think the next market's about 3,800 today, 3,700. I'm pretty convinced the next 3,800 points will be up. It won't be down. The next 500 points, the next 600 points, I don't know which way they're going. So the market ought to double in the next eight or nine years. It ought to double again in the eight or nine years after that. Because profits will go up 8% a year and, and stocks will fall. That's all there is to it. Lynch perfectly summarizes how to deal with a falling stock in those clips and with one of his most famous quotes, know what you know and know why you own it. This may seem obvious, but it is unfortunately a mistake many investors make. My advice is to learn how to dig deeper into companies rather than just simply watching their stock price go up and down. Learn to analyze the fundamentals, learn valuation techniques, and understand the overall business model. Taking these three simple steps will put you further ahead than 90% of most investors. There are many great resources out there to help you dig deeper, such as Seeking Alpha and my Patreon page, which has some phenomenal stock valuation tools. Both of these resources are linked in the description below. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.